Hello everyone and welcome back to Sew What If I Sew, I'm Jess and this is my channel all about sewing, dressmaking and all things stitch related. Today you join me for my quarterly makes roundup. Now I don't do these monthly, I prefer to do a kind of quarterly one so you guys can see the, the trends in what I'm sewing and I plan seasonally so it makes more sense. So I've actually made quite a lot in the last three months. So this starts from the beginning of September onwards when it was still nice and sunny at the beginning of September to now when it is freezing. There's a definite trend in what I've made. There's been quite a lot of reds, um, viscoses, uh, some jersey makes which have been really really fun and some slightly more complex stuff which has been great. So in this video as always I'll show you a little montage of everything I've made and we'll highlight a few so my proudest make, the most challenging, my favourite and as always my most worn and I will do my best to link every garment and every pattern and every fabric below. However, if fabrics have sold out, I will just link the fabric shop so at least you can see where I've got it from. So, let's get going. Now this was really hard, there was a real strong tie between my Emea shirt from Made My Wardrobe and my raglan dress from Trend Pattern. This had to win I'm afraid, so I adore my Emea shirt, I wear it all the time, uh, I love the finishing on it and everything, but this won because I would never in a million years have bought this in a shop, I wouldn't have, because I would have looked at it and said that look terrible on me but actually I love it I love it so much I love my big floopsy sleeves I love the way the back does up it's my favorite it's so comfortable and I wear it with a little belt black tights and boots and I look work appropriate I'm so comfortable and I could wear this literally any season like it's a light viscose from rainbow fabrics Kill then again it was actually gifted fabric in an order I'd already bought stuff they've just threw in some extra fabric for me which is very sweet um, and I love it I just adore this dress so much uh, but it's actually like I've forgotten because I've not worn it in a bit because it's got so cold here uh, and I'm not going out to work properly I'd forgotten how comfortable this dress is and I'm gonna wear it to work tomorrow <laughs> so this is it's got to be my favorite make most worn make by far is my Florence boxy tee from Size Me Sewing. I love the neckline, I love the shape. Uh, this fabric has been a dream to work with. This is the Tilling the Buttons organic jumbo spot jersey that I bought from Sew Anonymous. Everything as far as possible is linked below. Um, this is a super easy make, it took me less than an hour. I whipped one up for my mum as well, they're so comfortable. I cannot actually recommend just a basic pattern enough. Um, and I've actually got plans to make at least one, if not two more, of these tops. So definitely such a quick sew, easy, uh, it's a great like palette cleanser sew as well if you've been working on a massive project, just do something else really quickly and it's a quick win. So definitely my most worn make, uh, I've actually worn this out today getting a Christmas tree, um, I've also worn it with like trackies, or actually my favourite way is I wore it tucked into my brie skirt from cutting thread with the long cardi and heeled boots and it actually looked really professional so a definite win. This 
by far the most challenging thing I've made. And the thing is, this is not due to technical stuff. I've really judged this based off how much I think I swore and threw it around. Uh, this is my Norma hack. So there was a challenge going on from Fibre Mood to hack the Norma blouse in any way you wanted. The pattern was free to download. Uh, <laughs> if you want to watch how I got on with that, watch my October week in sewing video because the Fibre Mood website and me don't get on. It was almost impossible to actually download my pattern and completely impossible to download the instructions. So this was challenging because I had literally no instructions at all. I had a picture of what it should look like and I sort of had a go, but because I was hacking it, I very much uh, went my own way. So I made it button all the way down. Um, I did these big open sleeves. You can see I've still not hemmed the bottom of this because it was so frustrating. I had to take a break after I kind of finished. Um, and then I did a full fitting. So this is meant to be a boxy, blouse with a big puff sleeve um, and obviously I have made it fit me actually I'm very proud of the fit on this actually um, but I literally had it if you watch the video I've I like put it on as a waistcoat and I just pin it everywhere I inserted darts I did a button placket the whole way down I grabbed an a-line skirt from something else um, like another shirt dress actually I made um, I threw that on I took all of the space out the sleeve and then continued it down so instead of having a ruched sleeve I wanted these big kind of witchy sleeves so this was immensely challenging because I just didn't know what I was doing also this fabric is from Rainbow Fabrics Gilbert it is a viscose slub uh, and it's I'll come up to the camera it's got like these little dots on it as you can see so it's kind of like Swiss cotton but that soft flowy viscose I think it's Topshop Deathstock actually um but it is gorgeous to wear it's super soft on the skin but it's a nightmare to sew because you can't really see what you're doing on very fine black fabric so there were some very frustrating moments sewing this but I'm proud it's it's a good solid make and actually I learned a lot from it so although it was extremely challenging it was a great learning experience <laughs> I mean, could it be anything else? No. Uh, I am a still astonished that I made this. I really am. Uh, it's, I love it. Uh, there's a few things I've, I would like to change. Not change, but there's a few things I've learnt from, like the sleeve lining I need to sew further down and pull through, bits like that. But I'm so impressed with this. It's my first jacket zip, my first poppers, my first patch pockets, um, my first hood my first fully lined and bagged out garment. It's so exciting and I really, really do recommend the Tilly and the Buttons Eden coat as, which is obviously what this is, um, as a first coat sew because it's pretty, like, there are points of the instructions that are a little bit off, but as a, as a whole, it's a really, really solid project that I think any level of a sewer could have a go at. And depending on your fabric choices, you can make it as complicated or as simple as you need it to be. So I'd really recommend this coat. Uh, I love the storm flaps, they're a nice little touch. Um, I love the pockets, I just love the whole construction actually. And it's really boxy, so like today I was wearing a massive jumper and then this on top. And it's so cosy as well. Mine is made from black waxed cotton from Croft Mill. And the lining is a cotton poplin floral from Sewing at Number 51. And the zip and notions and everything are from J Cots, which again linked below. So now that you've seen all of my makes, I thought I'd tell you, like I did last time, uh, what I've learnt and what my plans are for the future a little bit. So. 
first thing I've learnt is how to use my over edge foot. So last last season, I should say, um, I said I was going to make a real commitment to trying to finish the edges of my garments properly. And actually, this is something I have started doing more. I could still be better, but discovering not only the over edge stitch on my machine, but also, crucially, the correct foot to use with it, as that was a struggle, um, has neatened up my garments a lot, which I'm really, really proud of. Secondly, I have conquered my fear of jacket zips. Now, I never said I had one, but I have, um, because inserting a dress into a, a zip into a dress, sorry, is easy, in my opinion, because the zip's still attached at the bottom. So you're just making sure it matches up the whole way, whereas for a jacket zip, you do have two independent halves, and it always freaked me out. So I have learnt both literally how to do that, and I didn't watch a tutorial, I just had a go, um, and it worked really well, and I've now done it a couple of times. Um, but not only literally learning that has helped, but also it's given me confidence and it allowed me to branch out into outerwear, which is really exciting. Uh, so that's been great and I have found new confidence in my sewing abilities, which is always nice. And the final thing I have learnt is that sewing can be really hard as you get towards the winter. Um, I, I've never sewed quite as regularly as I'm sewing now in the winter because normally it's really, really busy with work for me so I haven't noticed it as much. Whereas this year it's become very clear that I need better lighting and also that I'm more of a morning sewer. I find it really hard after work when it's pitch black outside to sit down and sew. It hurts my eyes and I feel like, I feel like I'm not as on it. I feel like my cutting's not as good and I wouldn't want to make myself do anything more complex than like basic seams and stuff because I feel like I just make more mistakes when it's dark because I'm just sleepy. But it does mean that I love my morning works, like pre-work sewing. I find that really enjoyable. I love the light. I love actually sitting up and doing something. So that's, that's something I've learned about myself is I'm much more of a morning sewer, uh, but also that sewing in the winter is, is hard work. It's hard to stay motivated. So, my more immediate plans for the future, because I haven't sat down really and planned my rest of my winter wardrobe as it were, but I'm going to make myself an outfit for Christmas Day, uh, which you guys will see soon. Um, even though Adam and I are having Christmas here together, uh, we're not going to see any family or anything because I'm clinically vulnerable, so is my mum. Uh, so we're just being a bit pragmatic and I'm actually quite excited we can have Christmas together. Uh, so there's going to be a few Christmas makes, a lot of Christmas presents which I will take you guys through, uh, a nice Christmas day outfit for me so we can you know, be fancy even if it's just us two. Um, and then there's a few bits, so I want to make a Tilly and the Buttons Nora and that will be happening very soon because I want to be cosy. Um, I'm going to make one or two more, definitely one more. Uh, Florence boxy tee and I'm also going to make the Florence blouse with if you guys haven't seen it It's a raglan sleeve blouse with like ruched uh, shearing cuffs and I've never done shearing so that's exciting uh, That's pretty high up on the project list um, And I'll be making my own Christmas jumper in the next week or two's time Which is one of the most yeah, it's one of the next videos you'll see actually um, I'm gonna make my own Christmas jumper so I'm quite excited about that uh, but yeah a lot of kind of seasonal makes and cozy things it will also depend on what I get for Christmas fingers crossed an overlocker um, <laughs> it's the dream um, and also I've asked for quite a few sewing patterns so we'll see what I get because that will influence my new year planning but what I might do is I'll do a video I think in January where I take you guys through how I plan seasonally uh, let me know in the comments below if that would be something you would be interested in so thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this has been a nice video to see what I've been up to, see what kind of things I've been making. If you've got any questions about any of the patterns I've sewn, let me know in the comments below. All, as I've said, all patterns, fabrics and everything will be linked in the description, so head there first. But if you've got a question about actually sewing patterns, let me know. I've also linked my sew alongs for any of the patterns that I've done one for, um, in case that is helpful. And if you want to have a go and see what any you know tips, tricks, pitfalls are, check out those other sew along vlogs. But it has been a wonderful autumn, and I can't wait to see you guys at the end of February to see what we've got up to in the winter. See what we've got up to in the winter. 
So if you enjoyed this video, please like, share and subscribe. And if you want to hear more from me, I am on Instagram and I have a blog. And I will be talking about some Christmas sewing gifts and places doing gift cards and that kind of stuff. So head over to the blog if you are interested in that. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Thank you.